right. Kirk, and we'll talk. So, Rocket League, <laughs> Rocket League rages over Richard Lewis higher. Now, this is Hunter, the very unfortunately named Hunter Grooms. I'm immediately sympathetic because I saw that headline just before the last election. <laughs> oh, Richard, you write your material off air, you you wheeze. Um, but. No, no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't sit back and appreciate your work. That's that is arrogant. That's conceit. Um, but listen, so I didn't even get the real guy. I got the guy who looks like Sargon of a card has been mainlining Soylent and Estrogen <laughs> for the past five years. That's the guy I get, right? So. We're going to watch this video, and I'm going to make a serious point at some point in the video. I'm going to have to stop it and make a serious point. But we'll have a bit of fun. We'll get your popcorn out. Let's watch and see how they cover this story, because it's very neutral, and it's very high-level journalism. My name is Hunter, and we have got a... It's Hunter Grooms. A bit of a doozy today as we talk about the drama that was surrounding G2's decision to replace Athena with Richard Lewis as... Not what happened, by the way. Uh, this constant framing is me replacing Athena. It isn't true. Athena left G2. I didn't replace her. She decided she wanted to go and be a content creator by herself. She left G2. She is no longer part of G2. She doesn't have G2 in her name, in her socials, anything like that. So they needed somebody. It, it could have been anybody. At no point did anybody replace Athena. Nobody. As the host of The Grid. Athena is a well-known Rocket League player who coined the term the Athena Flick, who recently parted ways with G2. With her departure, a slot needed to be filled in the broadcast with Orb. It seems like a lot of people had high hopes for who could possibly fill this spot, like someone who was maybe native to the Rocket League scene or a ex-player or something. Already beginning, you're gonna you're gonna see the bias. <laughs> you are gonna see some bias, my friends. Um all re and, and we'll also get into, he's wearing a dig t-shirt while he's doing this. And one of my biggest critics just happened to work for dig, be a content creator for dig, creates Rocket League content around dig. Optics of that are terrible alone. Uh, future reference, esports talk. Um, what you do is when you uh, are doing news, don't put other organizations in the spot of making it look like they endorse your opinions by wearing logos. I don't even wear my old E-League merchandise when I do streams because I don't want them associated with my views or my opinions. I'll just assume Digger okay with this. I'll message them and ask, do you, do, do you endorse what these guys are doing? Because uh, they must do, because you're wearing a t-shirt from them on, on your video. So, just a little tip for you. Again, I, I don't know anything. I'm just a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, recipient for my journalism. You're called Hunter Grooms. Let's, let's watch your work. Something like that, who was involved in the scene more so than maybe Richard Lewis was. The internet became... I hosted... First time Rocket League was on TV, I hosted E-League uh tbs i didn't get to do the second one i recommended machine for that he did it he knocked it out the park i was very sad not to do it it just coincided when we leave in the company when i went to wsoe we did rocket league very early worked directly in conjunction with psionics over it we did two of the biggest events but okay pretty heavily divided by this decision i would mm. say so in fact let me just read a few of the tweets that we saw in response to this announcement is that the same Richard Lewis who has been insulting and generally toxic to a majority yep. of the Rocket League community? Yep, that's the point. G2 would support such a person, no matter how talented a caster they might be. Y'all mm -hmm. know this dude has 50% of the Rocket League scene blocked on Twitter, right? Now, what I like is how he has uncritically accepted that. 
because a nobody on Twitter has said it. <laughs> it's now new. I, uh, so it's now the uh, it's now official, official news, official news. I have fifty percent of the rocket league guys blocked on twitter it is now officially reported and endorsed by esports talk that that is 100 percent unequivocally true reported completely uncritically by a very uh, accurate news outlet that's never made any mistakes at all in their reporting g2 needs to respond to this i don't care if he's a respectable journalist Reddit or thread. even if he's right in all of his arguments he's a scumbag we, we saw that one in the earlier. way he treats Call human that. beings yep, by hiring good. i'm uncritically unquestionably a scumbag as now reported by esports talk because somebody said it on reddit him, g2 are stating they literally don't care about the rocket league community they haven't even defended themselves saying his views don't reflect theirs mm -hmm. he's insulting people in the replies of the announcement we may not be their biggest or main game but they still have a team and are therefore a part of our community mm -hmm. they could at least pretend to care about what matters mm -hmm. That's going to be a yikes for me, dog. That's going to be a yikes for me. I never give a yikes. I never give a fucking yikes. I don't like yikes. I think yikes is overdone. It's overplayed. <laughs> I think people use my, yikes my too best much. moment yikes apparently. Have stayed in Scooby Doo for me. But this this is a fucking yikes. This is yikes. This is yikes in block capitals yikes. It's unbelievable and tweets and reddit posts like that just keep going so there's not really a point in me reading all of them wasn't really a point in you reading any of them as i uh, um again this is just a bit of journalism 101 hunter grooms um you know the thoughts of random cretins on the internet are not never will be news <laughs> and <laughs> Also, to report them completely uncritically and unquestioningly is grotesquely irresponsible. Don't worry. Well, we'll have some fun with that, mate. Uh, because I imagine my community are going to tweet out some things about you after we do this entire segment. And maybe I'll have to report them uncritically and unquestioningly. And that would be awful. To be perfectly honest, there's a lot of people involved in the community, whether it's professional players or just casual fans, who are upset about this hiring of Richard Lewis. The drama seems to stem back to issues that Lewis had with Leaf, a Rocket League caster. And so the general vibe just seemed to be getting more and more negative about the announcement as time went on. Likely due to the fact that Lewis is well known for stooping to low levels on Twitter, which... That's what I'm known for, apparently. All right. I thought it was 17 years dedication uh, to an industry that you are now a fucking parasite on the side of. That's what I thought it was. Uh, having done things and achieved things you never will and having bettered the industry in a way you never will. Um, that's what I thought I was known for. Um, stooping to low levels on Twitter, though. Okay. All right. Very interesting ended up just pissing Continue. off more and more people. We see someone insulting him, saying that you are ugly, please do this without the face cam on next time. While Richard Lewis then responds with a picture of that person that he must have found, I guess, on his profile. It was literally his pinned tweet. Saying, you look like David Koresh and the BTK killer wanked into a chicken in- On to, on to, facts matter. You, the, I'll explain the thought process. The embryo is here. The wank arcs onto the embryo and somehow conceives a chicken David Koresh BTK killer hybrid. That was the thought process. On, onto, not into. Into's disgusting, mate. That speaks to a dirty mind. Embryo. Shut the F up. Then he has this entire thread of him just putting down this other person who ended up deleting their tweets so he can't even see what they were saying, which... Well, nightmare! Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be crazy to maybe think, we can't see what provoked this response, so we just won't publish this or mention this. Don't worry, the most disgusting aspect of this uh, is yet to come. I'm sure it was equally as bad stuff, but Richard says, 
I am more important than I'm you. I'm sure it was. You can't Can't even type it. legible English and will never work a job that matters. Get me canceled for telling you that. Humble yourself, says the 18-year-old who has achieved F all Fuck in their all. lives. Good to see you are so mentally ill, you think that you speak for a whole community. That is Get mental outside illness. sometime, you effing mess. Fucking I am mess. telling you I am more important than you because you are worthless. Try and get me canceled for telling you that fact. Still waiting. I'm legit in bed scrolling and getting paid to call you a c Get me canceled. Come on, you worthless loser. Literally I'm happened. all the rules you set. Come hurt my career. Still let waiting. let me just say this. Lewis did make his own video on the subject and talking about the Rocket League community where he does talk about how he got a lot of hate from them as well. I mean, of course, it's the internet and people are going to come out and be, you know, toxic. And they were saying... It's all right, guys. It's the internet. So now we have Dig Dignitas... Hunter Grooms, Dignitas Hunter Grooms, he represents Dig, uh, uh, he represents Esports Talk, and of course he represents himself. He wrote this video, by the way. Uh, one of the things that you, I researched before even doing this stream, I went out, I reached out to Esports Talk and I asked, who scripts these videos? Like, are you just hosts and you read a script or do you choose the topic and write the topic? They absolutely choose and write these themselves. So Dig endorses this. Uh, Esports Talk endorses this and Hunter Grooms endorses this. It's just the internet, guys. So to every woman who's sexually uh, harassed, uh, all the women who are called terrible names when they play video games, to all the marginalized groups who face horrible abuse on social media, to people like me who are routinely doxxed and threatened and, 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 and had to have bodyguard. It's just the internet. So of course it's going to happen. There's nothing to worry about, guys. I'm pretty sure Dig might be a partner of any key, which completely is contrary to their message. But that's fine. You endorse it. Your logo is on screen the entire time. Your logo is on screen the entire time. And by the way, before you try and get me, that's OCP from the film Robocop. So... <laughs> so <laughs> who definitely would endorse what this guy said. <laughs> so... This, this, it's just the internet. Shrug it off. People are going to be toxic. People are going to threaten to kill you. It's perfectly acceptable. So says the Hunter Crew. Things which I think is extremely important to acknowledge in this situation. It's not like he was just coming out of the gate with this stuff necessarily. Mm, very important where to acknowledge. They that. were saying nice things, and he was just, you know, immediately responding with all this hateful mm. kind of messages back and forth. But they did, in fact, you know, say stuff like threatening him, threatening his family. And wow. So yeah. It's not like it was just a one sided thing. Wow. Both sides. You could say it was worse. Asked, that could even be say. the new story, so, yes, couldn't it, Hunter definitely Grooms? got tons of hate and filthy messages from strangers on the internet. Yeah. But personally, I just don't think oh. a good look for a professional is stooping down to these levels of just strangers on the internet, right? Like, why do you have to go through every single reply and respond to them in an equally, if not worse, toxic manner? So, remember, this is Esports Talks views, Hunter Groom's views, Diggs, Diggs views. It is, it is, it is equally as bad if not worse, to reply to people threatening to kill my family, threatening to kill me. That, that, that's the official stance of all of those groups. Sorry. Get, well, well, we will have to talk about this. I, I imagine I'll be compiling my own report in some days. Why does esports talk support threatening families on the internet? Why does Dig support threatening families on the internet? Because you know what, Dig? In the same way, G2's got to come out and denounce me. You, you're going to have to come out and denounce these guys. Sorry. That's the game we're playing. That's how we're working. Hunter Grooms is saying you endorse this. Sorry. It's the game we're playing. So... Well, it's going to be a mess, this. It's going to be an absolute mess. But we're going to have... This is the game we're playing. This is the game we're all playing, is it? And I haven't even got to the most disgusting part. Wait till you see it, guys. I will not even be able to play it on stream. It'll make me too angry. Uh, uh, um, but let's let, let's continue. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. To be doing those sort of things. And I think that ended up being a large part of the problem that people had was that Richard Lewis seems to be farming off of these, you know, negative 
hateful comments and I love emotions. Them. I mean, he just goes. I love that Twitter people threaten my family, and threaten to, to kill me, them and, make my know, life difficult. Out who yeah, just I'm farming impressions. That's exactly what I'm doing. Him. Mm -hmm. And then he goes and makes a YouTube video on them as well. How dare I? And so it's kind of like just farming off of these negative emotions. Imagine the irony of this soy drinking cunt having the audacity to say, I'm farming views off people threatening to kill me when I make a video about it saying, This is what happened to me. He makes a video about my fucking tweets and then he goes, I just think it's fucking so negative that those guys are farming views. You read tweets for a living, you fucking dickhead. You read my tweets for a living, you dickhead. Who's farming views, dickhead? How are you this fucking stupid? How are you actually this fucking stupid? You're claiming to be a journalist. You're claiming to be a fucking journalist. You think we're the same. So, don't worry. Dig, Hunter Grooms, sponsoring esports talk. Don't worry about that. We'll get to the really bad bit, shall we, that you did. And, um, oh, it's chef's kiss and this negative content in mm. fact i think train had a very great response and they introduce train wrecks aka train they're personal friends with train now i don't know what train wrecks has to do with this story right i don't know what train wrecks has to do with this story i don't know what train wrecks has to do with rocket league I don't know why Trainwreck is being presented by Dig Hunter Grooms of Esports Talk as being a credible uh, uh, kind of talking head on the matter, right? But why why don't we watch what they did? So in that hate thread, by the uh, in a hate thread from Valorant last week that this guy journalist, by the way, saw in a hate thread, a hundred comments all hating me uh in valorant because i said you know i can't release the match fixing stuff but i'd hinted Haha, these people could be in it or whatever by making a joke they the top comment was from a reddit user who has been obsessed with me since league of legends five years of just all hate comments about me and he said train rex had a really good point about him right and uh you know way to point out exactly what he does uh, real yeah, quick, way to point out. so I, I can't watch this because it makes me too upset. Uh, but this is uh, from the clip where about a month or two after Maria died. And remember, I found I found Maria. So for those who don't know, I lived with a dear friend of mine, Maria, for a long period of time. She, she died. I found her body. I performed CPR on her body. Um, <clears throat> while I waited for the paramedics to turn up. And... I, I went through a lot. That was a very tough and dark time for me. So, I was trying to get back into work and trying to do what I do, which is make content and try and make people laugh. And train wrecks have been nudging me to get on the stream. And I wasn't in a good place mentally. I was absolutely hammered. I was, I was, I, you can see immediately from the freeze frame. I'd been awake for three days. I was on sleeping pills. The doctor had prescribed me pills because uh, I couldn't sleep. I kept having nightmares. I was suicidal and I was drunk. And I went on this stream and I made a complete arse of myself because I was trying to push people away because about, I, I don't even remember the time scale. Two days after this, I went to a gun range and had a loaded gun pointed to my head and I was going to kill myself. So this was an unbelievably dark time in my life. This was... This is why I can't watch it. It upsets me. So. To use this clip. To use this clip. Of me and Train having an argument. Is unconscionable. It's, it's as low as it gets. To strike at somebody. It really is. And. You know, I'm ashamed of that. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm ashamed that it hit me that, you know, it was tough. It's hard to talk about. You can hear my voice changing. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to do that. But it was it a was really dark time. It was, it, it, it's, it's no joke. I wouldn't wish that on anybody, right? And me and Train squared it up, you know? I apologized to every guest on that podcast. I apologized 
to everyone. You know, it was really hard. You know, Critical was a big name at the time. I remember Train being very hyped. Critical was going to be on the stream. I completely fucked that up for everybody. And I'm ashamed of that. I'm ashamed I let my uh, addiction and my pain get the better of me in public. Okay? They used that clip where train wrecks teed off on me because I was being obnoxious and they used that clip to, d to discredit me. You know. That's what Hunter Grooms is. And I, and, 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 you know, listen, you can say, you know, oh, people should look out for me. Train shouldn't have had you on. I went through that for a while. Now, you take the personal responsibility. I, I could have said no. I should have said no. I don't know what I was thinking going on there. I can't even remember it, honestly. I'd literally been awake for like three days, jacked up on fucking pills and drinking and thinking, I'm, I just want to die. I, I, I don't want to be alive. I don't want to do this. And and people kept with people were trying to help because they were trying to nudge me back into normality and come and do a podcast and come and do this. And uh, I thought I could do it. I think secretly I was trying to self-sabotage. I don't know. It's very hard to remember that time. I just remember the people who looked out for me, funnily enough, were Ezfand, who I don't know, and Rod Slasher, who I've had beef with. And we stayed up late that night, very late. With them trying to talk me down off a lodge. Because I, I think I, I think after that podcast, I think I smashed up my... I, I, Rod did have to tell you, he, he was the last man standing that night. I think I smashed up the room and said I was going to kill myself or whatever, you know. And, 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 and that's the clip they use. Completely unrelated. What's it got to do with Rocket League? Like, what has that got to do with Rocket League and what's happening now? And that, my friends, that, that is the state of being a public figure. That is the state of play, right? Remember at the start of the stream, two hours and four minutes ago. Actually, technically not. Two, it's just under two hours ago because we did have Pantera, didn't we? What did I tell you? These people want you dead. The mob wants you dead. They only care about their clicks, their engagement. By bringing that up, and introducing that to a fresh audience, people are going to go, they're going to find that episode of the podcast, assuming Train hasn't deleted it, and even, it wouldn't matter even if Train did delete it, there'll be a million copies, and they're going to use that, one of the lowest moments in my life, like literally wanted to die, they're going to use that moment to judge me, and they're going to come back at me, and they're going to throw that moment in my face. I'll never be allowed to even move on from my grief as long as I work in the public eye. And trust me, I know many of you have seen the messages, including messages I got the last time from the Rocket League community. People will use that I loved somebody and they died as a weapon against me because I, because I blocked them on Twitter. That's the proportionate response. And so, and, 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 and so here we are, right? I can't, uh, the rest of the video, it sort of peters out. I'll, I'll, I'll show you, actually. We can get past that. Illnesses, and yet he still gets hired to host a show. Because, yeah, we should, we should listen to, like to the end of his thoughts, actually. Because this is where, after framing the entire video as being a, a perfectly valid, impartial piece of news reporting, they just segue into opinion at the end. Um, and he's got a very good, very informed opinion. That's Hunter Grooms. Uh, uh, Team Dig Hunter Grooms of Esports Talk has a very informed opinion about it. A great background of work, a great professional background of what he's done and what he's accomplished. But then he goes and starts trash talking 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds on the internet when he is going to cast a game and host a show that is about a game that is primarily a younger audience and so he's on twitter trash talking them and telling them how worthless they are and how they'll never amount to anything and how they have mental illnesses and yet he still gets hired to host a show that is pretty much made for that same audience and so a very interesting situation i think the broadcast did actually go pretty well i watched it and i thought the casting was good there was a few awkward moments in there of course but i think overall it was good he did a good job casting the event you can type it in chat so everybody can see it i, I imagine are these the awkward moments you can't see it the, uh, you uh, type you... in the keyword 
I've actually lost feel six sorry pounds since then. Use RL in in the chat. He couldn't even spell copium. It was just on screen a few moments ago. You're 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 counting out. It's not an N at the end. It's not copium. Come on, it's listen, copium. Listen, look at. I can't spell either, so I'm right with him. Um, and I, I'm also going to be giving out Twitter blocks just periodically over the course of the broadcast as well. So you know, make sure production you, literally said, "Yeah, let's not go there." Make, make sure you <laughs> you'll see there. why in a moment. Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, oh, I'm trying not to laugh. Everybody loves free stuff. That's what I've heard. The chat was originally pretty out of hand. Here we at go. First, you know, with people spamming Richard Lewis can't block me here until the mods got a handle on it. But I mean, shout out to Orb. Shout out to Richard Lewis in this situation. Thanks for the I shout out, mate. Thanks for the low, shout so out after you took a clip of me literally mourning my best friend, which, by the way, if you'd done any cursory research about this, you would have known what that clip was from. Everybody knew it. Even Train apologized to me. I apologized to Train. There was never any beef there. Train makes a really good good point like why have you inserted this we both know why you've inserted this team dig hunter grooms of esports talk we know why we know why you did it this was nothing but a fucking hit piece for your pals make a name for yourself let's see how that pans out by the way brother because i even I, I told jake last night because i know you cunts nothing sacred to you you'll probably leak the dms i told jake last night that it was a shitty thing to do and that no hard feelings to him right no hard feelings to him no hard feelings to you know he had nothing to do with this. You, on the other hand, my friend. Yeah, we're gonna get to know each other. You and me. We're gonna get to know each other. What a what a what an outrageous thing you've done here, by the way, mate. What a what an absolutely unforgivable sin you have committed. Not just in journalistic terms. Your journalistic output is an inf an unforgivable sin. But to do it to another human being because you won't spend five minutes researching is fucking outrageous. It's outrageous. Overall, I think it was enjoyable to watch. I think the casting went well. And so I don't want it all to be negative about the situation, but I do have to question G2's hiring of you have to question it. this entire ordeal because mm. maybe their thought process was, hey, this is a guy who does good work and will bring new viewership into the scene. He's Did. not necessarily from the Rocket League scene. And so maybe him- Numbers did not dip. We had great numbers on the first day as well when sure a lot of them were hate viewers. But we did a great job, and I know there was loads of people messaging me afterwards going, wow, Rocket League is actually fly. This is cool. I really enjoyed this. That should be what we all aspire to, to grow any esports. And I'll take the hate and the abuse to do that, because I take the hate and the abuse to do that every day I get out of bed. So don't ever tell me I'm thin-skinned. You are literally using the death of my best friend right now as ammunition. You chose to do that. Anyone who says I'm thin-skinned when I'm out here talking about it and being defiant about it, you don't know what thin-skinned is. Passing this, him hosting this event is going to bring in more people who wouldn't normally tune in and watch, right? But then you have the entire flip side of it, of this is a guy who is just toxic oh! on- As Fuhrer, pro player, sent me mad weird creepy DMs, we'll come to that. Right? This is someone who streams, completely, by the way, violating Twitch TOS, by literally harassing me. Now, they'll go, oh, but you're a bitch complaining about harassment. This person tweeted at me, drove a hate brigade towards me. Absolutely ridiculous. So we'll get to that in a second when we start talking about the loons. ...who has a history of beef with the Rocket League scene and brags about, you know, who he blocks on Twitter. And so no! How dare I?! No, I don't brag about who I block. Blocking is insignificant. They get angry about being blocked. You can't even get it the right way around. Like, how the fuck are you employed? Like, I would be absolutely embarrassed if you were the face of my publication. Like, you, uh, you need to go back to school. Like, this video is an atrocity. I'd be saying that if it wasn't even about me. You have got so many things wrong, presented conjecture as fact, presented opinion as reporting, and used something that had absolutely nothing to do with the story as a deliberate low blow. And don't you fucking dare pretend you didn't know what was going on in my life at that time, because anyone would Google and find out. An interesting choice by G2. So what do you guys think about it? Do you think it was a good move? Do you think they accomplished their objective in it? Until next time, guys. Be safe, be smart, behave. And I'll catch you later. Be smart, be safe, behave. Coming from Team Dig, Hunter Grooms of Esports Talk.